So let me continue now on this subject with this in mind and uh, talk about the timing of the rapture. Now, as I already mentioned this afternoon, I'm going to tell you. Well, very simple, four words. When ye think not. That's when the rapture is going to take place. That's precise, the exact time. When ye think not. So don't be alarmed by certain alarmists, by those who, who uh, uh, thrive on making sensational stories and sensational discoveries. Be very cautious. When ye think not. I wanted to spend the next 25 minutes with you f uh, thinking on the subject and uh, answering uh, four questions. And the first question is, what is the rapture? And Norbert already gave a wonderful illustration of it. Why is the rapture necessary? Why should there be a rapture? And then when will the rapture take place? Which we already answered in a way. And then signs of the rapture. So let's go and open our Bible to, uh, to uh, 2 Peter 3, 2 Peter 3, verse 3 and 4, where we read the following about people who do not, that means they are believers, they do not believe in the coming of the Lord. It says here, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Well, they are definitely not evolutionists. They are creationists. They are within our camp. And they realize that God created heaven and earth. Amen. So within our groups, within the evangelical group, we hear these type of voices over and over again. And they are increasing. That's why the rapture, the teaching thereof, and the prophetic word is being slowly declined and in volume and in interest. And many people, we experienced that in midnight call here in the United States, that the, the, that the uh, subscription, etc., the interest is decreasing the last 10 years. It's definitely decreasing. While in other parts of the world, it is almost explosively increasing. When we think about Brazil, our brothers in Brazil, where we are going to, tomorrow, we are flying to Brazil, uh, it's just fantastic the reaction they have to the prophecy conference. The auditorium is full, it only takes 800, so they have to cut off, no more, go home. He has already, um, they have already a tour to the Holy Land for 2012, next year. And they already have, I think it's for 2013, if I'm not mistaken, whatever. Uh, they already have over 230 paid reservations. And they don't know what to do with the 30 because they only can take 200. So, of course, they, if those people who don't pay in full by a certain time, they're going to be kicked off the tour. <laughs> now, we are happy when we get 30, 40, or 50. So something has happened here in the, in the States, in the Church of Jesus Christ, that is beginning to fall asleep. And rapture is, oh yeah, those rapture crazies. Yeah, well, they exactly, these are believers. This is not the world. This is not unbelievers. These are not atheists. They are not communists. These are Christians. Now, let's look at some, this, uh, some uh, uh, example in the Old Testament answering the first question, what is the rapture? And Norbert has already alluded, and some of these other speakers too. It is making way for judgment to come upon earth. Open your Bible if you have it in Genesis 19. And you know the story about, uh, about uh, 
uh, Lot and his family. The angels had to come and interfere supernaturally. What was the purpose of interfering supernaturally? To take them out from the coming judgment. Verse 17, escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay them in all the plains. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Verse 22, haste thee, escape hither, for I cannot do anything till thou become hither. God's hand are tied. God's hand to execute destructive judgment upon planet Earth cannot happen. His end, he, God is saying, I cannot. God cannot. God can do everything. Well, it says here, God cannot. He cannot break his word. He cannot do anything because there is a righteous man there, and he is not going to destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. Isn't that wonderful? What an example. Oh, I love that when I read that. Sodom and Gomorrah is the, 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 uh, the uh, city that was totally destroyed. Their fire came out of heaven. And that is what's going to happen in the future as well. Let's read in Luke 17 where the testimony Jesus uses that he goes back and he confirms by his quoting the Old Testament that the Old Testament is the Word of God. He refers to the Old Testament over and over again. In Luke 17, verse 28 and 29, we read, Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. I mean, this is so plain. This is so clear. The righteous has to be, has to be taken out of the way. The removing of the righteous from planet Earth is what the rapture is all about. And uh, I hope <laughs> that uh, each one of us is ready for this rapture. That we are not weighted down with all kinds of earthly uh, things, whether it is uh, finances, whether it's properties, whether it's family, whether it's friend. We are totally individually going to be raptured. We are not going to be raptured as a family, as something, oh, I will hold tight to my beloved. No, it's not going to happen that way. Because Jesus already told us that the family relationship is going to be done away with. We will recognize each other only on the basis of our recognition of Jesus and vice versa. Because Jesus has to recognize us. That's the new person. This is something remarkable that is going to happen which we cannot properly grasp with our intellect. Well, let me go right away to Point two, because I don't want to spend time here till midnight, although we are midnight call. <laughs> <clears throat> we are not going to spend time to midnight because you have already heard much during this day, and this is an extra long day, and of course you have eaten. When you eat, then you get tired. It's so hard to preach in the evening. Preachers should not eat, and I, <laughs> and I sinned. And I did eat, so. <laughs> now, the next question. Why is the rapture necessary? A similar reason, too. But why is the rapture necessary? Because God cannot execute destructive judgment upon his light and his soul. And he told us very plainly that we are the light of the world. We are the light on earth, and we are the salt on earth. And that is not something, he does not something you have to be, you have to do this in order to attain the level. 
in order to get the qualification as slight. Either you are or you're not. Either you are saved or you're not. And the saved person is light. It may just flicker, just a little spark, but it's still light. Even if it's a tiny little spark. And uh, I think you can prove that by going into a basement. If you have a basement in the house where everything is locked off and it's pitch dark. But if you strike a match, it's all bright. And the match cannot be seen during the day outside. And today we are living in this dark, ever a darkening world. People do not understand our thinking. They do not understand why we act as we do. They do not understand that we don't plan for the extended future. That we don't care about anything else but love one another. They can't understand that. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they see, that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Well, how simple. Now, we like to reverse that. We like to show off our good works. Did you know that I have written a dozen books? Ah, I'm publishing Midnight Call, News from Israel, and I'm serving the Lord now for 34 years. 40, 34, 43. <laughs> 43 years, you know. Nobody wants to listen to that. And I see that in, in the Christian world there is, you know, here is this doctor and so and so and this is man. He has done so tremendously. He is a great man. He has been in the White House and he has seen the Prime Minister of Israel, etc. All this bragging. That's not what people want to do. People want to see the light. And when they see light, then they recognize our work. And what do they do as a result? The praise our Father which is in heaven. 